What's up guys? All right, um, today we're gonna do the first of a multi-part series. Um, so this upcoming December, I have a cow elk hunt with uh, my buddy Jordan. Um, it's gonna be my second out west uh, elk hunt. Uh, and the last one I did in December of 2021, and this is all cow elk, for those of you who don't know, um, that's the female elk um, of the Rocky Mountain elk uh, species. Um, they're hunted in the late season, so December and January. The bulls are hunted from like September through to October, November. They'll also get hunted into like December too in certain states. Um, so we're, but that's your background. So we're headed in for a rifle hunt of cow elk in the late season um, in Colorado. We're going to be uh, past Denver a ways into the mountains. Um, we're going to be at about 6,000 feet uh, relatively. And so I want to do a multi-part series where I kind of showed you guys um, what I'm bringing this time and kind of why I decided to bring that time and how it's very different from what I brought the first time as a complete newbie. Um, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I did learn a lot um, off the initial experience and I've edited what I'm taking um, uh, to cater to the lessons that I've learned. So hopefully I can help you guys maybe skip a step or uh not have to have so many mistakes on your hunt. Um, now, full disclosure, my last hunt went successfully. I got an elk at about 150 yards. She came through, very mature adult, um, big girl, and uh, shot her. And we got her um, on the ground there. And I was actually able to get her off the mountain hole and um, to, to a processor. Didn't have it processed there. Just had them skin it so that uh, we could do the taxidermy. I, I didn't feel confident in my abilities at the time. Um, and then my buddy did as well. Now, my the guy I went with last time, he's not going with me this time. He's a full-time cop and fairly busy. Um, this other guy, he is going to be going with me this time. These are my two best friends, Seth and Jordan. Seth went with me last time. Jordan's going with me this time. Um, Jordan will come on a later uh, installment to this and kind of show you his setup. Um, I've advised him on it and kind of told him about my experiences uh, the first time around. Um, and he's done a lot of his own research and made a lot of his own uh, decisions. And uh, without any further ado, we're going to get into it. So this first one, we're not going to get into gear um, and we're not going to get into clothes. The clothes I just can't bear to do right now. I'm in North Carolina. It's hot. It's July. I'm not doing it. Um, we'll do that later. What we're going to talk about right now is we're going to talk about guns and guns exclusively. I think that's always everybody's favorite, so we'll go right into it. Um, for this season, for this trip, I'm bringing this guy. This is my left-handed 30, or no, I'm sorry, not 30 out 6, 300 Win Mag Bagara. Um, we got a nice little muzzle brake down here, 26-inch barrel. Uh, 6x24 Vortex Diamondback scope on it. Um, some nice custom leather pieces done. I got as Christmas presents from my wonderful wife. Um, and it's flinging 180 grain uh, soft tip uh, power stroke by Federal. Um, I like that bullet. It's worked a lot. Um, I've had this gun for about eight months now. Um, it's seen a little bit of action with some hogs and a lot of action at just at the range practicing out to, uh, further distances. Um, we're going with a guided service. I don't know Colorado that well, um, to be able to do it on my own. And, uh, so we go through a guide and they advised us to be, uh, able to shoot to about 400 yards, um, and know your shooting ability well when, by the time you get there, um, with this rifle, uh, Elk hunting, I feel very confident out to about 500 that I can down an elk uh, consistently, cleanly, um, reliably. Uh, I can hit a target consistently at about 600 yards with this rifle. At 700, things to start to get. Within three rounds, I can hit it at 700. At 600, I'm consistently hitting it. Now I'm a little bit varied on that you know, 10-inch steel target where I'm going to hit it. Um, but at 500, it's very consistent, very bam, 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 and uh, just hit my own gun. Uh, <laughs> and so that's why I'm going with this rifle. It's got a lot of knockdown power. It hits really hard. 
Um, the 30 cows have always worked well for me. And uh, I'm really excited to get this thing out and use it for really kind of what a rifle like this is designed for. Um, the only downside of this rifle is it's very heavy. Um, but I think that's actually kind of a plus in this instance. Um, cow elk hunting in the late season, uh, the snow comes in and it kind of pushes them off the mountaintops and into the valleys. So, you know, you still might have a bit of a hike, but you're not putting in like 20 miles plus doing a lot of glassing and everything else. It's more, much more of a, um, kind of figuring out where they're going to be bedded and figuring out where they are going once they get up out of their beds, um, and then pushing on them. So it's a little bit less cardio and a little bit more planning and tactic. And this rifle, due to its heavy uh, heaviness, and most of that's in the barrel, very heavy barrel. Um, and then just the ergonomics, it's very well designed. It, it recoils very minimally. I mean, it's 300 wind mag, and I'm a pretty scrawny guy. Um, but the recoil on this is very mild and, uh, um, frankly, more enjoyable than some 308s and other calibers that I have. Uh, it's just, it's well, well designed gun. Um, to be, I guess, over-prepared rather than under-prepared, we're driving the 27 miles or 27 hours from North Carolina to Colorado. And uh, you don't want to have a major issue where the only way to solve it, you're going to have to get something from your house back in North Carolina while you're out in Colorado. Uh, you don't want to be stranded. You don't want to be screwed, basically. So I choose to bring a backup rifle with us. Um, we're driving our own truck. We can store it the way we want to, so you might as well. Um, the rifle I'm bringing for that, you guys have already seen, it is the oh, Bagara 308 with the silencer. Um, 308, um, I'm also flinging 180 grain soft points from Federal. So the actual projectile, the bullet, from the 300 Win Mag and from the 308 Bagara, um, they're both Bagaras, uh, that projectile is the same. Um, the only difference is the velocity uh, and the amount of powder behind it and the barrel lengths. Um, this, has got, ooh, this has got a 20 inch barrel, um, which is much shorter. And then also there's just innately less velocity coming off a 308 round versus a 300 Win Mag. Um, because of all of this, I've determined that the um, ethical thing as far as this rifle goes, which this rifle is a great shoot. At the range, I mean, I'm consistently hitting targets five, six hundred yards away. But for me, um, just trying to be ethical and uh, respecting the animals that we're pursuing and trying to be responsible with the shots I take, I've uh, decided that should this rifle come out for those hunts, I'm not taking a shot farther than 350 yards. Um, I think that's conservative, and I think that's a good thing. I think the best thing you can do is shoot well under your ability, practice um, here and compete here, you know? Um, so that's that's the game plan there. Um, these rifles are very different than the rifles I took the first time around. Ooh. So the rifle I took for my first elk hunt, it was a successful hunt. So nothing against this rifle is this uh, Tika 30-06. Now, unlike the other two rifles, this is right-handed. This is earlier in my rifle career, uh, my shooting career, and I was comfortable just kind of making right-handed guns work for me, even though I'm left-handed. Um, and so that's exactly what I did. And uh, it's a great rifle, very accurate, incredibly light. I mean, this is almost a third of the, the weight of those rifles. Um, the barrel's light. This is light, it's all just super, you know, easy to carry and uh, um, good for backpacking out there. And the downside of that, to, of course, is you're going to feel a lot more recoil. You have a lot less rifle to absorb that uh, bullet and the energy it's kicking out. So you're going to feel that recoil a lot more. The other downside is 30 out 6 uh, is the in-between 30 caliber. If you have your 308, you have your 30 out six, then you have your 300 Win Mag. Um, and based off of that breakdown, um, you know, if your 308 is moving at about 2,500 uh, feet per second from the muzzle, and your 300 Win Mag is moving at 3,000 feet per second um, from the muzzle, this is going to go 27. 
So it's a good middle ground. It will kill elk. Um, it's got a bit of a kick to it, a bit of a punch to it. And uh, that was definitely noticed and felt, but I thought that was a part of gun shooting. I didn't realize until much, much later that I could go heavier and not feel recoil. Um, this rifle is still great. Um, I'm not sitting here saying that this isn't the rifle for you uh, for a hunt like this, and it's not that it's not the rifle for me either. Uh, any backpack hunt, um, you know, it, when we went to Colorado, or I'm sorry, not Colorado, when we went to Idaho for uh, Black Bear this year, I knew I was going to be doing a lot of hiking. We were going to be doing work off of mules. It was just a more strenuous activity. And, uh, you know, middle of spring, it's going to be hot. Um, and I didn't want to be carrying as much up and down the mountains. So this rifle was perfect. Um, but if you can, you know, sneak away with a little bit extra weight, a little bit lighter recoil, and a little bit more accurate of a rifle, um, you know, like you can for these late season elk hunts, uh, cow elk hunts, do it. Um, so that's the first lesson I learned. Uh, the backup rifle I brought for that 2021 trip, I also have here. This is when I scheduled the hunt. This was the rifle I was originally going to take with me. Now, you're going to notice a few things about this rifle right out of the gate. One, it's a youth gun. Um, that's pretty obvious just due to the size of it. It's very small. Um, you know, I'm six foot one. We're on a table here, and it's, you know, it's just tiny. Um, but I like that actually, it's very compact and the weight that it does have, um, isn't in the stock or isn't in anything else other than the barrel. The barrel is very heavy. It's a short barrel. I think it's like a 16, 18 inch barrel. Um, and it's got a lot of weight to it. It's got a nice little muzzle break to it and it's flinging, uh, six, five Creedmoor. Um, I'm shooting 143, uh, precision hunter by Hornady, Hornady, Hornady. Um, I have this rifle, has performed incredibly well on hogs, um, does a lot of damage, delivers a lot of energy, uh, downrange, and it's an incredibly accurate rifle. I mean, I haven't changed scopes on this. It's just a Vortex Diamondback 3x9, uh, scope on here, and, you know, out to 300 yards, all you're doing is putting the crosshairs on. And that's pretty much the same for almost all these rifles. Uh, once you have it zeroed and kind of what the deal is just with the drop of the bullets. The only thing that I don't think I have, uh, zero properly for that type of work is, uh, actually the 30 out six. Um, it's zeroed at hundred yards. By the time you get out to 300, you, you need to hold over a little bit because it's got, I think four or five MOA drop, um, with 180 grains. Um, and the lesson I learned was simply longer barrel. A little bit more weight doesn't have to be the compact um ergonomic we're going into the back country uh you know 20 miles a day type of rifle if you're going to go and do a hunt like that it should be if you're doing bull elk in october or november and you've got to go out into the mountains and find them it should be it should absolutely be one of these lighter rifles and save you that weight because you're backpacking everything and you got to carry the meat out of there too so cut every ounce that you can cut. Um, but on a hunt like this, uh, I would rather go with some heavy rifles that are incredibly accurate um, rather than light rifles that are a little less accurate, um, kick a little bit harder, so they're a little bit more punishing. You get a little bit of that shooter's fatigue uh, sooner. Um, and then the other thing is, is you know, the Creedmoor, it's, it's the smallest of these you know, free guns. Uh, the other three are... 30 cals, and this one I think has got a what, uh, 0.264 uh, diameter. Um, and, and I don't think that necessarily is a horrible thing. I mean, guys are killing elk with them. Um, people are killing elk with 270s. People are killing elk with 243, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. But, you know, it's absolutely doable, and it's, it's workable. Um, but I find myself, uh, after having gone there and seen these elk get shot, seen, uh, I mean, the cow elk I shot took three rounds of 30 out six. Um, first one dropped her. Second one I thought finished her off. And then the third one was when I actually got up to her and she was still kicking. Um, you know, that's over an hour span. I mean, they're tough, tough animals. Not one of those shots wasn't a death, deadly, on the vitals, 
in the neck um, kill shot. They're all effective shots. These animals just are tough and they're built to take a lot. Um, so don't skimp on the calibers that you take and uh, bring a backup rifle, especially if you're driving um, and not flying because you don't have to ship them. Um, definitely bring a backup rifle. You don't want to be up there high and dry. Um, having to run to the pawn shop last minute and pick up like a 45 70 and try and sneak up within iron sight range of them. That's a really shit way to go. Um, unless that's what you want to do from the game. Totally cool for me. Can't do it. Um, so that's what I'm taking for this trip, rifle wise and caliber wise. Um, a little bit about handguns and stuff. I would say, uh, Colorado in December, you're not really worried all that much about bears. Um, it's still a possibility. It's always a possibility that you run across bears, especially once you have a dead animal on the ground. Um, but they're usually hibernating, kind of kind of stuck up wherever they are. Um, you know, wolves are a possibility. Colorado says they don't have them. It's bullshit. I've seen them. Um, I saw them when I was there last time. And I went for one, like, three-day excursion, and I saw wolves. And... and I saw them from a ways off. I didn't see much of them, but they're there. Um, so wolves are around, mountain lions are around. Um, and then, of course, you always got your stray crackhead uh, at a gas station while you're traveling. Um, for me personally, I look at all of that and I say these are kind of um, these are dangerous things, but they're smaller things. And uh, a 9mm or 45 is just fine. There's no... There's no reason to break out the big heavy revolvers or the 10 millimeter Glocks or anything like that. Um, if you were in Idaho and you were dealing with grizzlies, I would. Uh, grizzlies don't have the same hibernation schedule as black bears do. They, they'll get out and they'll go wandering about. They're, they're more closed in, but they'll get out um, and come around, especially if they smell food. Uh, black bears, I think they close off a little bit more. Um, so that's my two cents on that. Um, and then that's the rifles I'm taking. So next installment, we will either, I haven't figured it out with him yet, we'll either be going over Jordan's rifles, and you'll get to meet him, or we'll be going over a uh, kit that I'm taking. You can kind of see my backpack up there. It's metal frame backpack. That's kind of the direction we're going to be going in um, and why I picked what I picked and kind of what it is, worst case scenario, best case scenario uh, that you can be running into out there. So um, next time. Uh, we'll talk about that. So remember to subscribe. Try not to miss the next video. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, I love making these videos, and uh, I really, really appreciate you guys being here and being um, a really nice and polite audience. Um, the comments so far have been really encouraging, and uh, the notes people have been giving have been really helpful. So love you guys. Thank you so much. See you next time.